Hi, and welcome to Starbridge Mom video. Today's video is all about Mercury retrograde from May 10th to June 3rd, 2022, in the signs of Gemini and Taurus. We're going to go ahead and talk about what that means to have Mercury retrograde through those two signs. But first, it's really this energy right now is pretty. <sighs> particularly mischievous and fickle, everything feels really highly charged. We're in the center of eclipse season and feeling Mercury retrograde amping up as it will be fully retrograde tomorrow. Pluto's already retrograde. Jupiter's getting ready to switch signs from Pisces into Aries, which is completely different energy. Um, so right now, buried emotions are coming to the surface for a lot of us. Mishaps and miscommunications have already started. And also, there's a lot of insights that are illuminated during this time. It can be a time of great release and healing if you let it be, if you work with the energy and you don't try to sweep things under the rug. If you're not familiar with what Mercury retrograde is, which I should have started off with, I have a video all about Mercury retrograde, just what that is specifically, and I will link that for you in the description box. So the energy this month is behind triggering a wide range of emotions for so many of us. I want you to take a deep breath and get centered. Honestly, really, right now, I would like you to just close your eyes and take a really nice, deep, long breath in through your nose, deep into your belly. And then exhale slowly with control. And maybe just practice that while you watch this video, focusing on your breath, nice slow breaths, because it really does help us to calm down and to get centered. It's important during this time to proceed with patience. Don't rush into anything right now. With eclipse season here, it's highly recommended to, to just go with the flow, Surrender to the universe as it guides you on the next steps of your path. When it comes to your emotions, let them come up and process them and then release them with love. That's especially true for low vibrational feelings and emotions. They want to be seen, heard, and processed with love so that they can transmute into the light. It's okay to feel frustrated, angry, sad. We're human. We have a huge range of emotions. We aren't meant to suppress our emotions, but we also need to know when feelings and thoughts aren't fact and to let them go with love and without judgment. When old wounds are opened, how can we process that pain with love and release it with love? I talk a lot about love, about living from the heart, but it's unrealistic to take that to mean that we should be high vibe all the time, only expressing love and light. There are times when we have to travel into our shadow. There are times when wounds and fears are triggered. There are times, like for me, over the last couple of weeks since the eclipse season has started and Mercury retrograde shadow started, I had to check in with myself. I had to get right with myself. I got in a fight with my husband. We were dealing with some intense stuff that came up recently in a therapy session and unearthed emotions that I wasn't able to process during that time. There was so much anger um, from an event that took place. And though the session itself was really productive, it was hard, but it was productive. But later that night, it seemed we both had to let stuff out. It just didn't come out in the best way. It's okay. Uh, things happen that way sometimes, especially during this type of energy that we're in. But one of the things he told me, granted it was an argument and I'm kind of throwing him under the bus right now and I don't mean to do that. Uh, it was kind of an attack on my character because he told me that I wasn't that spiritual if I could be so angry. But you know what? Yes, we can. We are human beings with a wide range of emotions. It's how we work through our anger when it comes up. Being spiritual does not mean you don't feel a full range of emotions. It doesn't mean you don't feel pain, anger, sadness, grief, betrayal, loss. You absolutely do. But it's what you do with it. It's how you respond to it. That's what makes the difference. Okay. 
than a few days ago. I rebroke my little toe. So a couple days ago, right, we're in this heavy shade of Mercury retrograde starting. I was preparing for my son's 18th birthday party and I stubbed my toe on my toddler's rocking chair and instant pain and devastation set in. I broke it last October during the post shadow of Mercury retrograde and it was just finally starting to make improvement. I literally that day, earlier that day, just this last Friday, thought, oh, it's not aching as I walk around the grocery store. And then I came home and snap, I broke it again. I was pissed. Okay. I wrote a post about it. I cursed. Someone told me they would pray for my language. People think anger, frustration, pain, cursing aren't signs of someone that's intelligent and or spiritual. It's not true. I'm here to tell you that is not true. Feel your feelings. If you suppress that shit, it's going to go right into your shadow. And I promise you, it will come up again. And it's going to come out in other ways. And it will not be productive or pretty. I was so disappointed to have a broken toe again. You guys, I'm a skater. I need my toes. I was heartbroken to realize that I was not going to be able to get back on my skates and for how much longer that could mean for me. Uh, skating zins me out. It's deeply restorative and meditative for me. It's such a physical release to skate. Anyways, what I'm getting at is that I let myself feel that pain and that frustration and that heartbreak. I got whoa for a short bit, okay? But about an hour or two later, I felt that frustration dissolving. I wanted it to dissolve. I didn't want to be in that low vibrational state. I didn't want to be like, oh, now I'm just pissed at everything because I can't do what I want to do. Um, it's, it's really, I wanted to work through it. So I let myself feel those emotions. And then I went to go sit outside in the backyard and I listened to my wind chimes blowing in the breeze. I watched the bees around my tree and I started doing some self-breaking. Come on. Come back home. Okay. Uh, I shifted my energy and I lifted my vibe back up. And that's what I mean by how we respond and what we do with our wounds and our triggers and emotions. Mom, I never seen that shirt on you. I know, it's new. Yeah, so new shirt guys, you like it? Alice in Wonderland looking into the matrix. <laughs> okay. So, we always have a choice in how we respond, but know this, suppressing things is never going to make anything better. So as we go through this time of emotional energy raining down from the cosmos, lean in, let yourself feel, but don't suppress it and don't get stuck in it. Let it flow through and release it with love. Oh, and FYI, cursing is not an indication that you're dumb or not spiritual. You can be spiritual as fuck whether you use swear words or not. And I'm just gonna drop this right here. There's numerous research articles that have been around for years and continue to get published that people that curse are often quite intelligent and that also cursing can be a release, an event for anger and frustration rather than letting it get trapped in the body. Just try not to do it at someone. We don't want to wound others with our words, right? So just do you, swear words or not. Okay, so back to Mercury retrograde. That's my little Mercury retrograde story. All right, instead of looking at taking things slowly or experiencing any delays during this time, look at time as a gift. That's what Mercury Retrograde is really offering us, is offering us a gift of time, an opportunity to see the slowdown and extra time as a gift, stay present. Mercury Retrograde gets a bad rap, but it can support us through revealing insights and things that aren't working out any longer that need to be changed. Seriously, guys, the universe loves us, God loves us, it wants to support us in a very divine way. So just trust that. Lean into it. So Mercury retrograde starts off in the sign of Gemini. Mercury is Gemini's ruling planet. So when it goes through Mercury, its energy is at its peak and its attributes come through really clearly. However, it's a little bit different when we go into Mercury retrograde. But Gemini and Mercury are associated with all forms of communication, speaking, writing, listening, technology, radio, teaching and learning, exchanging facts and data and ideas, as well as governing over, governing over siblings, friends, and short distance travel. So when Mercury is retrograde in the sign of Gemini, what happens? Well, we're prone to more inc uh, increased 
communication mishaps, not being able to find the right words, being misunderstood. Things get taken the wrong way, your jokes get lost on someone, your thoughts aren't forming into words uh, in an accurate manner. You, you know, there's a time that you really want to double check your emails, double check your text, your social media posts, and take time to think before you speak. There's a lot of mental fog that comes with this. Um, you can't make sense of your emotions and feelings. There's a difficult time connecting with your intuition when this happens for a lot of people. And then there's the probability of increased gossip and being caught gossiping. So don't talk shit. Just don't do it, period. Uh, travel blunders. So car troubles, accidents, or interruptions to transportation. So making sure that you have extra time when using any kind of transportation and making any travel plans. Take your time and be safe. Also, it's not the best time to buy a car. And friendships that aren't working well might flare up. So don't take sides and don't get into the gossip and take a step back from any peer pressure that you might be feeling. And then when it comes to writing, make revisions. It's a good time to make revisions to written documents, programs, manuscripts, workshops, and podcast plans that you might have. So Taurus, on May 22nd, Mercury will be re-entering into the sign of Taurus. This is a slower paced, grounded, stubborn sign. So Mercury retrograde is already slowed down and then it's going into the slowed down earthy sign of Taurus. Taurus has like two speeds guys. It's either lounging under the tree in the field, taking a nap, or it's charging ahead at something. Okay, There's really no in between. Most of the time it just wants to eat and chill. Um, so Mercury retrograde isn't exactly known to be a time of stability, right? It's really a time when things seem to not work out well, and it's actually quite an unstable time. When Mercury retrograde is in the sign of Taurus, we're asked to take a look at our values. We're asked to look at the things that do make us feel stable and our finances and where we're being stubborn in life. We may experience holdups with money and finances. Um, our beliefs might be challenged. So ask yourself about the beliefs you hold on to. Why do you hold on to them? Where did they come from? How are they serving you? If they're not resonating with you anymore, can you let them go? So during this time too, shopping might also become compulsive. You might let money slide more through your fingers with each swipe of your credit card. Stay present and ask yourself if you truly need to splurge or can you just get by with window shopping? Um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, so with Mercury retrograding Taurus, it's highly likely that old flames show up, and you might be the one either checking in on an ex, or they might be checking up on you, and you might be faced with unresolved issues in your love life and relationships. Taurus shows up. It Taurus also shows up how we provide for ourselves, the work that we do to take care of our own resources, so troubles at work could arise because for Taurus, it's really important to be able to have your own resources, have control over your own resources, food on the table, clothes on your back, roof over your head, you know, your material possessions, things like that. So take a look at what's going on with that during Mercury retrograde. Also do any maintenance to your material possessions that might need it, like your car. Um, staying flexible this Mercury retrograde during any Mercury retrograde is so, so important. Gemini is associated with the throat chakra, Taurus is associated with the heart chakra, so keep your heart open for the highest good, and then seek honest answers, okay? The honest answers are here. They're not here, okay? Your, your ego cannot provide honest answers for you. And then use your words with kindness and respect to speak your truth and think through your words and approach, um, think through your approach before you're dealing with people or situations that might be intense. So see troubles that arise that come up during Mercury retrograde. There's, you know, a lot of ways that it can be, that it can feel overwhelming or chaotic. Um, so take this time to see troubles that come up as an opportunity to correct the problem, to, to seek out a new path, find resolutions, to revise and rethink things in a way that serves the highest good for all involved. Don't dig in your heels and charge at anything if you can help it. So that's my two cents on Mercury Retrograde, May 10th through June 3rd this year. Uh, I hope that helps give you guys some insight into what to expect and what the energy is like right now. Um, I'm sure you're feeling it. So 
Uh, if you would like more information about Mercury retrograde and what that is, like I said earlier, I do have a video on just what Mercury retrograde is uh, and how to deal with it, the do's and don'ts. And then uh, that'll be linked in the description box. And then you can go to starbridgemom.com. I do reports. I can do specific reports, whether you want a natal report or if you want one to just know what this period looks like during Mercury retrograde for you, how it's affecting your overall natal chart. I can do that for you too. Um, and then there's other services that I offer on there and programs as well. So take a look over at starbridgemom.com. Thanks guys so much for watching. Uh, your support means a lot to me. It's how I do what I do. So if this video resonates with you, you got something out of it and you'd like to donate, I do have that option available on my website as well too. So again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.